Hello, welcome to the Well of Being. This is Melissa, intuitive healer, guide, and channel. So today I am being called to through these three decks and we're going to bring forth cards to support us with transition and completion. That is the theme that keeps coming in today, transition and completion. So feel into these three cards and the three offerings that wanted to be present and decide which path aligns for you today. We'll begin with the white light oracle. We'll place this lovely Merkaba front and center. All right. Connecting into transitions and completions. Transitions and completions. We're going to do three cards today. The first card is Seraph of 963 Hertz. Spirit Bear of 396 Hertz. And I'm hearing we're going to do four cards. Ansof Aur. And the final card, which I wish to place at the bottom for us. The Ivory Wish Fulfilling Crow. A lot of these are very new to me. <laughs> this is awesome. I love it. Okay, all right, deck number one, people, the Merkaba, the White Light Oracle. I'm hearing that this opening for transition and change for you and completion, there's a deep inward process that you have been in. This deep inward reflection and it's not a negative experience. In fact, it's really, really quite blissful. This newfound awareness of the infinite wonders that is your unique alignment to spirit. So there's this very deep reflection, like inward. You may have felt like so much of your experience has been inward going inward going and this is confirmation for you deck number one that this inward going experience is absolutely where you need to be right now that this is nurturing this newfound there are many levels of connection with self that you are opening to that it truly it just feels like playful and wondrous like you're in this state of awe there's some part of you that may be resisting this a little bit and feeling like, all right, what am I really doing with all of this? So, and I'm just showing you what I'm seeing through the cards is that you are just being called to drop even deeper into the beingness, even deeper into the beingness, allowing yourself this deep meditative time of going within and allowing yourself to just play with the lightness of the connection of these newly found aspects of who you are. You're just in a state of awe and wondrous awakening. So very almost childlike awakening, that playfulness. And there is a purpose to this for your spirit. So allowing yourself to be fully immersed inward and playing with these energies because there is this, I'm hearing deck number one people, there's a very shaman-like connection that you are bringing forth as you awaken to your spirit. So what I mean by this is a very strong alignment with the earth realm and nature and reading the signs in nature and being able to connect to the spirit of nature and the spirit of 
animals and the shifts and transitions and completions as we experience them in nature for your own healing. So it's like you're observing this as you're awakening to it and then you're being called to take this information inward and to play with it and to support your own healing process. And I'm feeling that as you do so, you will feel called to bring this wisdom forward, forward, and you're bringing it forward like in a very grounded, earthly way, and also with the right timing and alignment. So I'm just thinking of the bear and hibernation, you know, knowing when it's time to enter that state of going inward and knowing when it's time to awaken and come forth in the spring. So I'm not saying that it, it does feel like it's coming soon for you. Don't get hung up on a timing and a date, but your awakening out of what has felt like a more inward hibernating kind of place is, is opening for you and that you are going to bring forth this energy in such a grounded embodied way. And that's been part of the purpose of the going inward is that you've needed this time to really be present with the energy, to process it, to integrate it again, to use this healing energy for yourself. So the ivory wish fulfilling crow. So this feels like there's something about the light and the spirit and the channeling, the connection that you bring that has such an, a big picture perspective a big pic picture perspective and a cleverness to it. So there's this very unique way that you're able to take things that for many may seem a bit esoteric and etheric, um, and you need to be in that, but then you're able to ground it and you're able to align it in a way to shift perspectives in a way that provides a lot of ingenuity that is so needed in this time of so much shift on the planet. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm seeing that you'll be bringing that to the life that you do have. Again, allowing yourself plenty of time and it's gonna be a continuous process of integration. And there may be new ways, you know, new ways that you see that you will be shifting how you bring not only, you know, your work to the world, because it does feel like it is something that is a calling for you because you have such a unique groundedness and clever perspective. But also just, again, it's like, this is all of you. This is an integrated process that's all of you. So you're bringing this forth to all of life. You're bringing this forth to all of life, to your relationships, to your connection with your body, to all of life. So I'm gonna complete this with some light language. Samba eke oro o kai eke ke oro o kai e. Samba a o kokoro o kai eke ke oro o kokoro o kai e. Ai ata kanjaro o kai e. Ai a kokoro o kai e. You are so multidimensional. So all of this frequency and your ability to integrate, again, what it seems to be quite etheric and esoteric in these very clever, ingenious, and grounded ways is such a gift to all of us. What a beautiful offering. Wow. All right. Let us see what's coming in for deck number two. So deck number two, we have the Mystical Shaman Oracle card deck, which I know for those of you who have been following my Oracle readings, you haven't seen this one before. I found it in my daughter's room. I gave it to her and she never opened it. So I'm like, mm, taking it back. <laughs> and we'll do another... The Earth Keeper. We're doing a four card pull the Holy Mountain. Taming the Wind. And our final card. The Time Master. Wow. All right. 
Deck number two, Mystical Shaman. We have this beautiful phoenix-like figure. I'm sure there is a name for what this is, but it's, I see Isis and I see Phoenix and I see the Falcon and beautiful, lots of vibes in this beautiful piece. All right, okay, wow, wow, wow. So in the offering that was channeled for today, there were beautiful messages about the energies here on earth and using our awareness of how earth handles her transitions and completions, pulling in the elements in such a beautiful, unique way that may at times feel quite disruptive to us with the temperatures going up and down and the winds coming forth, but this is all necessary for the transition and completion. So I'm hearing deck number two people that you have a very strong connection with the elements. If you are not already aware of this connection, you are waking up to it right now. It is one of your inherent gifts. One of your inherent gifts. So when we speak of this concept of the mountain, the mountain is a structure here on the planet that creates such beautiful alignment between earth and mineral. And it is from the mountains that all water flows into the oceans. So you can literally trace this on a map, this beautiful connection. So there, this card being here at the center feels like whether you were aware of the mountain and it's like this veil has parted and you're like, ah, oh, see, there's a being up here in meditative pose. So I'll pull it forth for you. So you may have been aware of the mountain or it's like suddenly like, where did that mountain come from? <laughs> Which really does happen here on the planet when there are great, you know, shifts in tectonic plates, of course, not in recent times that suddenly new landforms emerge. So you could have had either one of those feelings where it's just a sudden parting and it's like, <gasps> and or it's like that, whoa, this sudden shift and it's like, there it is. So it's a very strong, uh, powerful presence, this connection you have with the elements. So I wanna bring forth this card of the Earth Keeper so this connection with the elements that you have and that you're being called to really anchor and integrate into your life is because that is part of your purpose, to embody the elements and your connections to the earth plane in such a way that you are aligning to earth's transitions and her completions which is changing, of course, because Earth is evolving as we are evolving with the new shifts that are here on the planet. But your elemental alignment is allowing you to keep up with the way Earth is, is aligning herself. So as an Earth keeper, you are... So Earth is supporting you in these elemental awakenings and shifts. And in turn, you are supporting Earth through your energy presence and your integration of this in such an embodied way. So I'm going to keep going, but I'm seeing a lot more around that. This also comes into this element of wind, which has been so present literally here on Earth across the midsection of America today, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday late, early this morning, I mean. So this concept of the taming of the wind. So this isn't really about control. It's about empowerment. So again, because you have such an alignment with the elemental energies, you're going to feel this awakening connection of what it really feels like to embody these different earthly and elemental energies within your life. What does it feel like? to be empowered by the wind, to be empowered by the mountain, to be empowered by the earth and all the other elements that are here on earth. 
So rather than like the taming is not quite the right word, it's that you can harness it. That also came out in the <laughs> channeling earlier. So that you are harnessing these elements and you're able to bring them into your embodiment in such a way that it supports you at every level in your changes that you are creating, your transitions and your completions within your life. You can call upon the elements and not just you can call, you are being asked to call upon the power of these elements to activate and support you in your process of moment to moment life, in your work life, in your home life, in your relationships, in healing your body. You're being deeply, deeply encouraged to tap into this gift that you have. Again, for the purpose of your own healing and integration, for what you are bringing to the planet through that integration, and it will begin to shift everything in your life as you are aligning and aligning and aligning in such a beautiful way with the elements here on earth and how you uniquely embody them. So this concept of the time master. So we know that time is an illusion and yet time is part of being an embodied human on earth. So as the time master, you're able to connect into different aspects of time as we speak into them as elemental and natural transitions and completions and openings and that timelessness that holds all of the structures of the time. So the time master feels like you are developing or have developed this means of being such an observer of the bigger picture of how everything unfolds over time. Not just here, you know, as we look at the transition of the seasons and such, but also in your own life as you age and as, you know, life continues through different processes. Um, even your own personal transitions and completions, you're able to hold this place of an observer and you have a heightened awareness of the timeliness, that of the right timing. And you are developing an enhanced flexibility within the time construct that we have here on the planet. So what that means is by tapping into your elemental gifts, it will support you in working within what we might call the constraint of embodied life on time. So in a way, the perception can be like you can expand time and you are able to accomplish so much more within what may look like a limited time frame because you are tapping into the elemental gifts here on earth. So, and yeah, that feels like the most important message to partake is that concept of expanding and allowing that expansion to be a way in which you bring in all of these elemental and earthly connections to support processes. And thus it looks like an acceleration. <laughs> and it's so much more is able to be accomplished within a short time frame. So, wow, beautiful. So elemental, elemental, bring this forth. Somba ukayo uru ukuru ukai e. Somba e takai uru utake uru ukai e. Somba eke uru ukai e. So I'm just hearing that these elemental connections that you have are providing just a really beautiful anchoring, anchoring of spirit to mind to body within yourself, but also here on earth. And because you reflect that out into the world, you are supporting others because for some, this, is, this time feels like it's very overwhelming and like it's difficult to find a center point, but this is your strength. So as you continue to dive into your elemental and earthly connections, you resonate a new center point of earthly embodiment that sends out a frequency that will also support others in doing the same. 
Beautiful. Love it. Okay, deck number three. We bring forth Holly in this lovely shell that I found somewhere. I'm not sure where. <laughs> it came to me. All right, so let's see what Madam Kali, I don't know why she wanted to be Madam. <laughs> Madam Kali wishes to bring forth today for us. We have Sri Bala. Kurukula. Guna Tantrika. And our final card from Madam Kali, Mahakali. Beautiful. Ah, all right. Whew, there are a lot of levels that are being brought forth for you, deck number three, but the one that is calling me forward first to share is this Sri Bala, and there is this gentle presence to her. And these delicate flowers, and there is just a softness to her presence. Now, right behind her is this very masculine stone figure uh, that is just radiating and emanating beyond her. So there's something about you being called to bring forth your gentle presence. Again, circling us back that this is about transitions and completions. So there, there is a part of you who hasn't allowed this softness, this softer side of you to come forth for many different reasons. Um, you didn't feel like it could accomplish anything. You didn't feel like it was safe. And this portrayal of your tenderness, of your gentleness, of your innocence is being revealed in such a way where you have this energy, this presence behind you that says, we got your back, girl. <laughs> You're safe. You are safe to bring forth this energy. In fact, this softness and this tenderness is really, really necessary to come forth at this time. Uh, for you and your own healing as you approach your own transitions and completions to be very gentle. And it feels like, yes, there may be some inner child work that you are called to because uh, you have blocked yourself from connecting with this aspect of yourself. Um, and it's just such a necessary part with the intensities that are going on that we don't just try to muscle through it. <laughs> that we don't squish these parts of ourselves that are so gentle and so tender because they are powerful and they have so much wisdom, so much guidance, so much to teach us. And it is safe and it is purposeful to bring forth these energies at this time. So in addition to having this beautiful, soft inner child, you have like, I feel like it's like phases of your embodiment and there may be phases that you're aware of and you may be able to connect in this lifetime it could be across other lifetimes as well but you're being called to tap into these different energies so to tap into this inner child energy for both healing and the strength and softness that she brings this kuru kula wants to come forth next so she i mean look at her with her many, she is so centered. She is so centered and her eyes, you cannot see the, her eyes are glowing. So there is an inner vision. So this feels like a wise being coming from the inner planes. So, and she's got all of these arrows and many arms and she just looks very, again, very, very aligned. So there's something about 
for you. Oh, and here's another arm down here <laughs> holding a sword. This inner aspect of your being that's coming forth that, again, it's this connection to your intuition, your inner vision with such precision and clarity. Like, you know exactly where you need to go to get what you need to get. That's what I'm hearing with these arrows, like so precise and her alignment. So this aspect of your being, you're being called on her to support you in your own transitions and completions because you have this gift for really being able to hone in on your own stuff, <laughs> where you need to focus. And I'm hearing uh, deck number two or three, we're at three now, deck number three folks, that there may be some aspect of you who has not fully allowed her to come forth because you don't trust that she's there. You're not allowing her to fully come forth because you are distracted and going outside of yourself to, you know, hone in on what's really going on, whether this is physical things manifesting in your body, experiences you might be having in your life, uh, you know, all these different things that you might, you know, seek comfort from a friend or, you know, seek a healer. This being is telling you like, you really need to tap into that high level of connection with your intuition, with this absolute ability you have to with great inner knowing and precision to hone in on where you need to focus and with the arrow it's like a forward moving direction like you need to start here and then you will be guided on what next steps you need to take to support you in your transitions and completions so that can be you know is there is there someone outside that you are being guided to connect to but you have to start here you have to start within and listen to her first because she's like girl look at me <laughs> i i am you i see all aspects of you from within i see parts of yourself that maybe you don't even see listen to me let me guide you let me guide you okay uh, she wants to go last so guna tan Trika. This feels like there's a little connection to this. So you can see it almost looks like it's a blood moon or some sort of disc and it's crumbling. So it feels like, you know, and then you have these, the symbols that are so strong and aligned, but this other structure that's falling away. So it feels like there are things that are falling away in your time of transition and completion that you need to allow them to fall away because you have these beings inside of you, these aspects of you that need to rise up. So this could be part of what we were speaking into with Kuru Kula, the idea of you going outside yourself and not trusting that what you're seeking is within you. So you are really being guided to let those stories fall away. Let the illusion that, you know, you have that there, <laughs> that this support doesn't lie within you fall away. So let the illusion fall away, come into this place of alignment and, it, and coming into the place of alignment is going to support it with falling away. But you may notice that there are things like, okay, this could be, Practically, this could be things like classes that you've been doing or certain people that you've become overly reliant on asking their opinion, uh, people that you've been seeking guidance outside of yourself that you'll see quite a bit of falling away because you have to get that clarity of connection within and then any external guidance going forward comes from this place of alignment. And this final beautiful card, we have Mahakali. And again, wow, I mean, she's got a lot going on here. So she's got all these different sabers and swords. She's holding fire. She, I don't know exactly what this is. <laughs> Some sort of, uh, it's. it could be, we could consider it a weapon or even like a I'm hearing the word chalice, even though I know it doesn't look like a chalice exactly, um, a scepter. 
And then of course she's got this skull over here and she's just, oh, and her lotus flowers. Like there's so much. So this feels like a card of another level of your, and she's even holding up different hands with mantras. Like again, that message that there's so much that is crumbling away for you right now and so much guidance that, girl, do you realize how powerful you are? Or guy? <laughs> Do you realize how powerful you are? Do you realize how powerful you are? That everything that you seek, looks like these want to be like this. Everything that you've been seeking is within you, is within you. The tenderness, the wisdom that is held within the lotus as it roots itself in the muck and the mire and blindly grows forward to the light of the sun. The clarity, I feel like this is just setting very clear boundaries because there's a time and a place for you to truly from the inside out, you're being called to set very clear boundaries. This is necessary for you coming into this, this trifecta of Spirit. Of course, it goes beyond that, but these are three different ways that are really coming forward in this moment to show your gifts and your power, your connection with the elements, your, your inner strength, and your connection with your embodiment. So there's something, it's not just happening in the, the inner spiritual, mental, etheric realms. There's something very strong that you are being called to bring forth as you align on the inside, all the rest of your life is going to align in this very powerful, clear, and beautiful way. So bringing forth all of these different energies of the tenderness, of the alignment, and the directionality of moving forward and clarity of setting boundaries and like literally lighting the way, lighting the way for yourself, lighting the way for yourself. So this deep inner work of the clearing and going within and awakening these different aspects of your being and allowing yourself the time that you need to support that deep level of connection with all of these aspects of your being. And then from that place, allowing yourself to be guided with clarity on how to take the forward moving action because it's both, it's both. And it's not like you're gonna get to a certain place like, oh, I'm not gonna tell you it's three to six months. This is gonna be an inner knowing and all of these beings are with you, you know, as you're in the ongoing process of the release of the falling away and the opening to all these beautiful, powerful gifts that you have within you. Senke or okai ekeke or okai ekeke or okai ukuru ukukokoro o. Eke or ukukoro o kokokoro o kokokoro o. Ayata kokoro o kokokoro o kai e ekeke or ukokoro o kai e. Ai. Beautiful. Anyone who hears the banging, it's because of all the wind outside. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to take that out, but it's part of the, the percussions in the back because of all this beautiful transition. All right, let's bring back the cards for goodbye. So we have the white light oracle. And we have the mystical shaman oracle. And we have the Kali oracle. Thank you, thank you. So many blessings and wishing you all the best as you open into your transitions and completions. If you are seeking one-on-one -on -one support, visit wellobeing.love. Blessings.